You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's time to talk about the Green Bay Packers. This is your Packers Update, the Daily Cheese, brought to you by Packernet.com. The Daily Cheese is a collaboration with the Packernet Podcast, hosted by Ryan Schlipp, the Pack Daddy, and I'm your host, JJ Leahy. The Packers have announced they are parting ways with defensive coordinator Mike Pettin after three seasons. Unlike special teams coordinator Sean Menenga, Pettin has not been fired. Simply, his contract will not be renewed. Matt LaFleur said on Friday, We want to thank Mike for his commitment to the Packers for the last three seasons. He was an important part of our success. As a first-time head coach, he was also an invaluable resource for us during our time together. Of course, Mike Pettin previously was the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. One would assume that Matt LaFleur did find his experience very helpful to lean on. Now, many Packers fans all over are celebrating because they wanted Pettin gone. But as Ryan Wood noted, Pettin was a very good defensive coordinator with a long track record of success, even in Green Bay. His 2019 defense ranked 9th in points allowed. His 2020 defense ranked 9th in yards. Still on some of the biggest stages, the Packers have been unable to deliver, largely resulting from the absence of quality play from his superstars. In the last two NFC Championship games, Zadarius and Preston Smith together combined across those two games for only two pressures on Jimmy Garoppolo and Tom Brady. Now it falls to Matt LaFleur to find a new defensive coordinator, and he's expected to make an extensive search, a source told Tom Silverstein. Now, a lot of you are asking for names, so here's some names. If the Packers decide to look outside their organization, Wade Phillips has expressed a desire to return to coaching. Jim Leonard is a name that's being tossed around a lot. Chris Richard of the Cowboys. Tampa Bay inside linebacker coach Mike Caldwell is a rising name. Packer fans, of course, will remember how Devin White and Levante David torched Green Bay twice this year. Jim Hazlitt, Tennessee Titans inside linebackers coach, a pick that I don't really understand because the Titans linebackers were pretty bad. Indianapolis Colts defensive line coach Brian Baker, a guy with a lot of experience. And 49ers defensive backs coach Tony Oden is another name that I like. He was also the safeties coach for the Dolphins last year. And saving the best for last, Terrell Austin from the Steelers. He's currently the secondaries and assistant defensive coach. This is a guy I had my eye on early on in the season but forgot about. In fact, someone tossed his name out earlier today, and I did not know who they were talking about until I looked him up. Now, interestingly, with Austin, he was actually interviewed by Mike Vrabel for their open defensive coordinator position. But Mike Vrabel ultimately decided to go in a different direction. Terrell Austin then signed an extension with the Steelers, either late yesterday or this morning. However, I believe he could still be hired away by the Packers. Of course, LeFleur could choose to go with an internal candidate. Mike Smith, outside linebackers coach, and Jerry Gray, defensive back coach are the two names that make the most sense. LaFleur did choose to go with an internal hire for the new special teams coordinator. That would be Maurice Drayton, a third-year assistant special teams coach who's been around since the Ron Zook days. Apparently, Drayton was actually LaFleur's first choice for special teams coordinator when he was hired. However, the upper management for the Packers encouraged LaFleur to look outside the organization. He tried to hire Darren Rizzi, who went to the Saints instead, and ultimately settled on Sean Menenga. That is the story. However, it is worth noting that the Packers have denied that there was any pressure on LaFleur to hire outside the organization. Drayton is extremely well-liked inside the organization, and several people who know him well have spoken out. One unnamed source said that Drayton would like to simplify special teams. That's something I've been calling for all year, saying Drayton did not try to undermine Menenga and coach the schemes he was told to coach. Broncos special team coordinator Tom McMahon, who has worked with Drayton before, said... I think these guys are going to be a top five special teams unit. He called the hire deserved and earned, saying, I think he's going to excel. I think the core, the specialists, they found themselves a special guy. So here's hoping, a special guy to coach special teams. One final note, the Detroit Lions, who have been making major splashes, bringing in an entirely new coaching staff on almost every level, have hired Dom Capers as a senior defensive assistant. Now, although Capers is not remembered fondly by the Packers fans, it's worth noting that he is an incredibly intelligent guy and he will not be calling plays in Detroit. From 2009 to 2017, when Capers served as the defensive coordinator for the Packers, the Packers ranked first in the NFL in interceptions, second in takeaways, fourth in sacks, and allowed the league's ninth fewest points per game. 
So as funny as it sounds on the surface, the Lions have found a capable mind on defense. It is worth noting that Dom Capers did spend the last season with the Minnesota Vikings, but his one-year contract with them was not renewed. Matt LaFleur will address the media for the final time this season, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. We will hear from Brian Gutekunst at 9.30. It's been quite some time since we heard Brian Gutekunst talking to the public about football. For more in-depth analysis and a look at Packers strategy, make sure you're subscribed to the Packernet podcast hosted by the Pack Daddy, Ryan Schlipp. Keep up on all the Green Bay Packers news by going to packernet.com and join the Packernet podcast Facebook group. My name is JJ Leahy, and this has been The Daily Cheese, your Green Bay Packers news update.